The next item of business is statement by Keith Brown, an update on BIFAB. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Keith Brown, up to 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you for the opportunity to make this statement today. Uh, Presiding Officer, Parliament will recall that on the 22nd of November 2017, I gave a statement on the circumstances surrounding the future of Burnt Island Fabrications, or BIFAB as it's known. Several months have obviously passed since then. I want to take this opportunity to return to the Chamber to provide an update on the progress we have made and the commitment that this government gave to support the company to fulfil the bowl contract and to try to identify a long-term future for the BIFAB yards. Operating over three sites across Scotland, Burnt Islands, Methil and Fife and Arnish on the Isle of Lewis and the Outer Hebrides, in November BIFAB had a permanent workforce of around 250 staff with a further 1,100 employed via agencies to support specific contracts. However, as you'll recall, in November, the company filed a notice of intention to appoint administrators, which triggered a period of intense discussion. Urgent further discussions led to a number of financial commitments being made that gave BIFAB the comfort they needed to delay a decision to place the company into administration immediately and to continue toward the completion of the contract they held for the Beatrice Offshore Wind Farm Limited Bowl. All of those involved in these discussions, SSE, the partners in the Bowl project, Siemens, Seaway Heavy Lifting, BIFAB themselves, and the trade unions, Unite and the GMB specifically, should be given credit for having taken a very proactive attitude to, towards achieving a solution. As an added security, the Scottish Government committed to make available, if necessary, a commercial loan to BIFAB. Presiding officer, this collective approach not only provided an opportunity for the continuation of the BOL contract, but also created space for ongoing work to secure third-party investment. Mm. At the time, both myself and the First Minister made clear that we would do everything we could to identify a way of bringing in new investment and of giving BIFAB the best possible chance of winning new orders and securing a long-term future for the company. And I'm delighted to say that goal has been achieved. Earlier today, one of Canada's largest independently owned construction companies, GV Driver, acquired BIFAB through its subsidiary, DF Barnes. In a deal brokered by the Scottish Government, DF Barnes will combine their financial backing and project expertise with the international profile and skilled workforce of BIFAB to secure fabrication and construction contracts in the offshore renewables, marine and wider energy sectors. DF Barnes has been a consistent employer in the oil and gas, fabrication and marine industries for over 80 years. It has expressed an interest in global expansion and recognises the opportunities that are here in the Scottish market. As part of the agreement, the Scottish Government will expand the loan facility made available to BIFAB for the completion of the BOL contract and convert that loan to a minority equity stake in the new company. That loan facility has been made on a fully commercial basis. The extent of the shareholding will be determined by the extent to which the loan facility is utilised in completing the BOL contract. The shareholding itself will not exceed 38%. While by its nature elements of the agreement are commercially confidential, in the interest of transparency we have shared the details of the loan facility with the Finance Committee and I am happy to provide the Committee with any further information it requires. I do also want the presiding officer to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the workforce on all three sites, Burnt Island, Methil and Arnish. Our focus uh, has been and remains on the workers, their families and the surrounding communities. And we acknowledge that the past few months have been an anxious time for them, their families and the communities involved. But I appreciate their support throughout this process and the contribution that the trade unions, the GMB and Unite have made to securing this agreement. The First Minister and I met with the new owners, the existing management and the unions earlier today at Methil, and everybody there was committed to building a successful future for these yards. Officer, although we are positive about today's announcement, the work can't stop there. Offshore renewable energy and the offshore energy industry in general is a key strategic opportunity for Scotland's economy. Renewable energy is already providing significant levels of skilled employment, often in relatively rural or remote areas. However, all of us want, to supply, want the supply chain to develop and grow further. And if you look at Scotland's oil and gas supply chain, that sector's success wasn't immediate. It took time to build the supply chain, but it is now globally renowned. 
It employs more than 100,000 people in Scotland and it exports that expertise to countries across the world. We now want to create as rapidly as possible a similar success story for offshore renewable energy. That's why we're investing in infrastructure, supporting ambitious companies, promoting research and develop, uh, development, and also ensuring that people have the right skills. We want Scotland's renewable resources to provide skilled employment as well as sustainable energy for communities across the country. And there are some real opportunities for the Scottish supply chain, including BIFAB, from a number of consented wind projects, for example, Kincardine, Murray, Murray East, um, Inch Cape, um, also NNG, which was discussed in Parliament earlier, and Sea Green, plus further opportunities south, for example, in Hornsey 2, East Anglia 3, and Dogger Bank. And of course, these are commercial decisions for the developers, but our aim is to secure as much work on as many projects uh, for Scotland as possible. And to help achieve that, we'll combine our efforts and those of our enterprise and skills agencies with pressure on the UK government to recognise the sector in developing their industrial strategy. Scotland has a competitive advantage and the building blocks that are critical to more expansion in the renewables sector via the skills of the Scottish workforce. And indeed, that was one of the main drivers uh, for DF Barnes becoming involved in the work in, in the first place. And also our existing port infrastructure and location and our innovative academic community add to that competitive advantage. With a relatively new industry, it's not always going to be straightforward and we will not, of course, win every contract, but as today's announcement shows, perseverance can achieve results. Presiding officer, today's agreement gives the workforce, the company and the government the best possible chance of securing a vibrant future for these yards. The Scottish Government believes BIFAB can be a thriving business, supporting Scotland's offshore renewables and oil and gas industry, as well as competing internationally for work. And we will continue to work with the company to achieve that success. Again, another key attractor uh, for the company, the involvement of the government uh, in coming to this uh, de decision today. And as the current contract, the bow contract, comes to an end, and while efforts go into winning new work, there will continue to be difficult times for the yard and for the workforce. But I am confident this agreement, which will see the Scottish Government become a minority shareholder in the company, will deliver for BIFAB's future in Fife and the Western Isles. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have just over 20 minutes for questions. Could I urge if members wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons now and I call on Murdo Fraser. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I uh, thank the Minister for his statement and for advance sight of it? This is good news for BIFAB, the workforce and the wider economies of Fife and Lewis. For months, a dark cloud has hung over the company and the local areas affected and the announcement of the acquisition by DF Barnes today will be warmly welcomed. I'd like to associate myself and my party with the Cabinet Secretary's remarks about the workforce and the contribution that has been made by the trade unions in helping secure the future of the company. Along with a number of uh, my Conservative colleagues, I was happy to join workers and trade union representatives at their recent rally outside Parliament. And I'd also like to give our support to the Scottish Government's ambitions for offshore renewable energy and indeed its ongoing support for the oil and gas sector. I have, presiding officer, two specific questions arising from uh, the statement from the Cabinet Secretary. Firstly, what assurances have been given regarding the number of jobs that will be secured at the three sites, Burnt Island, Methyl and Arnish, including not just the permanent workforce of around 260, but also the additional 1,100 men and women who were previously employed through agencies? And secondly, while I acknowledge what the Cabinet Secretary had to say about the need for commercial confidentiality, is he able to outline uh, to the Chamber the total value of the Scottish Government's support for the new purchaser? Cabinet Secretary. Hey, can I say I thank uh, Murdo Fraser for his initial remarks and also the dark cloud that he refers to as having hung over um, by FAB is certainly true for each of the individual employees concerned and that is that human uh, element uh, to this particular uh, situation which has been very important. In relation to the jobs, no, the assurances only come from winning contracts. We've made this clear right the way through. In order to grow the workforce, which is what we want to do, because many of the contract employees that Murdo Fraser refers to, of course, no longer work there. The contracts haven't been wound down. But it's pointed out today that BIFAB in the past has uh, had over 2,000 employees. And the determination of those on all sides uh, today uh, at the announcement to try and 
make sure that we grow as many jobs as possible is very evident. And the fact it's shared by trade unions, by the new owners, uh, by the existing management and the workforce generally, I think is a very encouraging sign. But the jobs follow winning work, winning contracts, and we are doing as much as we can, obviously within the constraints of the procurement uh, process to help uh, with that. And also, I, I have to say, unfortunately, no, I can't give more details on the quantum of monies involved that is commercially confidential. I will, though, as I said already, share as much of that information as possible uh, with the Finance Committee. I realise there is an interest there, but it is commercially confidential. I call Jackie Bailey to be followed by David Torrance. Jackie Bailey. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for an advanced copy of his statement and very much welcome the news about BIFAB. I believe that everyone in this chamber wants this deal to work and we salute the efforts of the workers and their trade unions in their unstinting campaign. The Cabinet Secretary knows that we believe that too many renewable jobs go abroad, so this is a welcome respite. But redundancy notices still hang over a number of the core workers at BIFAB. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm if the new owners will move to lift this threat and retain skilled labour? Will he ensure that there is a continuing role for the trade unions, not just in terms of recognition agreements, but sitting round the table, helping to secure the future of the yard? And finally, I believe the government provided loan funding of £15 million in November 2017, a further £4 million in March 2018, and now will be providing a welcome additional £10 million for restructuring. Can he confirm that the original £19 million loan is the equity stake in the company and tell us what happens when this is repaid, will the government's interest cease and over what time frame this is envisaged? Cabinet Secretary. There's a number of questions in there. First of all, I should say that the quantum of monies which is eventually provided by the government will be dependent on the extent to which it's drawn out as required by the, by the company itself. Um, first of all, I think the discussion that we had today at BIFAB involved the trade unions and the management and the new owners. That was the first time that the trade unions had met formally with the uh, new owners. And we left them having discussions on some of the issues which Jackie Bailey has raised. And it is for them, the new owners, uh, to take forward um, those propositions. They have no intention of shedding uh, further staff. They have a commitment to try, uh, as the trade unions and others have, to try and grow the numbers of staff there. But of course, that is a decision uh, for the new owners. It was also pointed out by the company, DF Barnes, which has taken over by Fab, the very productive relationship which they believe they've had with trade unions in Canada. Um, and they want to seek to continue that uh, productive uh, relationship with the trade unions. Here, and that was reciprocated by the trade unions. So it's, there's no question that there's a, a very good basis for collaboration going forward with the trade unions. There's no intention to de-recognise or get rid of trade unions, a very productive start to that, um, that, that relationship. Uh, and also just to say, I think on Jackie Bailey's last point, we have said to the company, and one of the reasons why they were as keen as they were to get involved uh, with BIFAB, is that the government wants to stay in for the long term. Now, we'll have to wait and see how that develops in terms of the equity stake. And that, as I've said already, will depend on a number of different factors. But we have said we want to make sure that we do as much as we can, not just for BIFAB, but for the renewable sector in Scotland. And the company are quite used to working with governments and are very keen to work with this government. And it's, as I say, one of the reasons why we managed to get the successful conclusion that we've had today. David Torrance to be followed by Alexander Stewart. David Torrance. Thank you, President Officer. I'm delighted with today's announcement that secures the future of BIFAD and the jobs of many of my constituents. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that this deal provides long-term assurances for the company with opportunities for future growth? Cabinet Secretary. But I think in the short term, I, I agree with David Torrance, but in the short term, what it does is secures the work that's there to finish the contract, which is yet to be finished in relation to the bowl contract. And it allows... Uh, the company to go forward to try and secure further work, as David Torrance mentions, with the backing of a very experienced uh, new set of owners and with the financial clout they bring, and also with the knowledge that the government is invested in this quite literally, but in many different levels. So I think that does prevent, uh, present a very positive potential future for BIFAB. The crucial point, of course, will be uh, in winning those contracts. There are two uh, contracts coming up in the fairly short term, which BIFAB will have an opportunity to win but there's also other work which we can identify and work with the company to try and ensure they have the best possible chance, once again, within the procurement regulations. But I do agree uh, with uh, David Torrance and uh, the fact that his constituents, many of whom work at the uh, location, will be hugely relieved by today's announcement. Alexander Stewart, to be followed by Claire Baker. Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome today's substantial developments for the workforce and for the company. 
the Scottish Government believe Bifab can be a thriving business, supporting Scotland's offshore renewables and oil and gas industry. So my question, Cabinet Secretary, in your statement you indicate that the loan facility will be expanded and converted into a shareholding. Can I ask, is this a short-term, a medium-term or long-term arrangement? And when would you see the timescale for disposal of that shareholding being realised? Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, well, as I said in my statement, uh, the loan is on commercial terms and our commitment in terms both of that investment and our support for the new owners will be as long as that is required in order to uh, win the jobs and the work uh, for the company. But I would say that uh, it's very important, I think, at this point that I refer Alexander Stewart back to his last question on this. When he accused myself and the First Minister of having said in uh, November we had saved the company, we've never said that. And this statement today doesn't say that either. We have made sure this company continues to exist right through to the completion of the bowl contract. We have made sure we've helped to facilitate new investment by very credible new owners of that contract. What that does is give them the best possible opportunities for the future. We will stay in it for the long term, but we should all be clear. And the, the workforce and the trade unions and everyone else that was there today is clear. There's a great deal more work still to be done, but they now have the opportunity to achieve that, uh, new, the, those new contracts and also to further grow the workforce. Clare Baker to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Clare Baker. Um, thank you, President Officer. I very much welcome the positive news today about the future of IFAB, and I believe that the workforce has shown determination, dignity, and a huge commitment to their yards and to their communities, and today they should be proud of what they have achieved. The Cabinet Secretary is right in recognising that the work doesn't stop here, and it is now crucial for BIFAB to secure new contracts going forward. With the government now having a minority equity stake in the company of up to 38%, how involved can or will the government be in supporting the company to secure future contracts, which you recognise is crucial to their future? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I start by thanking Claire Baker and the group of MSPs who have been involved uh, with this as we've gone through the previous uh, months. I think it's been a, an extremely responsible attitude that's been taken, which has been helpful to the government and to BIFAB to get to the stage that we're now at in, in the way that the MSPs have gone around uh, their business. Um, I think it's also true to say that the support that we have um, the fact that it's been united has been very helpful to us, both with uh, BIFAB, but also in relation to the substantive point which Claire Baker raises, in relation to further opportunities. Now, I know that the work that the MSPs, the group of MSPs that was established, did in relation to this, and that's been mirrored within the government. Both myself, the First Minister, and Paul Wheelhouse have been involved in making sure that we do the work that's required with potential future uh, contract opportunities to make sure they're as well placed as possible. Now, we do that, as I keep saying, and I have to keep saying within the procurement uh, regulations that we, we work within. But the fact that we've been able to have that united front uh, and the fact that we've been able to talk to some of these uh, potential op uh, opportunities with now the backing of a substantial company with financial reserves and experience in this field has been hugely important. So that to me is a, is a very encouraging aspect. But as Claire Baker rightly says, we know this is just the next stage, uh, the next very important stage which follows after this is to make sure we win that work and a great deal of efforts going into that. Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Jenny Gilruth. Presiding officer, I, I join with colleagues across Fife today uh, in welcoming this news and congratulating all involved. What opportunities does the Cabinet Secretary think there are now for BIFAB as the renewables industry continues to expand, particularly in the context of the wider Fife economy? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I did mention uh, the uh, different opportunities which we're aware of, but there'll be other opportunities, of course, which come along. And can I also thank Jenny Gorruth as one of the MSPs that I referred to previously in terms of their support for BIFAB and I think for the government's actions over the previous uh, months. I think it's also true to say that even as recently as this morning, new opportunities were being discussed with a company which perhaps hadn't been fully explored up to this point. And it does tell me that this company is very hungry for this work. It's not just the case, of course, they're interested in the renewables work, which they're very interested in. And it's the main reason why they've come here in the first place, because of the excellence of the workforce that's here and the expertise, but also in terms of oil and gas, which is a very important sector uh, in, in this country, and also a number of other engineering uh, projects as well. So it may not all be in terms of renewables, but even in terms just of renewables, some of the opportunities I've mentioned already are not an exhaustive list. So there's plenty of opportunity out there, and our job now is to help make sure by fab take opportunities when they arise. Mark Ruskell to be followed by Willie Rennie. Mark Ruskell. Uh, thank you. Today is certainly a great day of hope for communities in Fife uh, and the Western Isles who fought so hard to protect their livelihoods in recent months. But to take this day of hope 
and turn it into a secure future for these communities, it's clear that we're going to need investment. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, what kind of, uh, when will Scottish Enterprise be able to finalise their investment plans for these yards to make sure that we have a competitive supply chain and competitive yards? And also, what work is the Cabinet Secretary doing with Baroness Brown to ensure there's a sector deal for offshore wind uh, coming from the UK government? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I think, first of all, as part of today's statement, and I can't go into too much detail, there's investment being made already by Scottish Enterprise and by High in relation to making sure this deal goes forward and that the um, new company or the new owners of the company are able to take best advantage uh, of uh, those opportunities. Now, the investment which the government has made is substantial enough. The investment also by Scottish Enterprise and High adds to that. And of course, we will look to see what else is possible to do. But we have a purpose in trying to get a company like DF Barnes involved in this. They are the ones that have the expertise. Uh, they are the ones that know exactly what equipment and what facilities they need in order to, to win that work. So those, they are the experts and they are the owners uh, of the company and we will work with them. In relation to sector deals, I think uh, Mark uh, Ruskell may be aware of the frustrations that we've had in terms of the co um, consultation and collaboration on sector deals with the UK government. Uh, but this Parliament's committee, the Economy Committee, I think has the chance to question Greg Clark on Thursday when he appears before the committee. And I would imagine that that's a question that Mark Ruskell would want to take up with the UK government. But for our part, we are very keen to engage in this very important sector. And just crucially to add, of course, that Mark Ruskell was again one of those MSPs who provided that support, and I'm grateful to him for that. Willie Rennie to be followed by Julian Martin. Willie Can Rennie. I thank the Minister for an advance sight of the statement? The Minister, I think, is right to be measured about today's progress. It is indeed good news for BIFAB workers, Lewis and Fife. But as he says in the statement, there will continue to be difficult times ahead. So can the Minister perhaps set out a wee bit more detail on some of the pressure points, the milestones, the order gaps that he's predicting, and how the company and the government intends to try and address these? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, again, I thank Willie Rennie for his question and acknowledge the role that he's also played in terms of that um, uh, support from the, uh, the group of MSPs that have been most involved. Uh, I, I think it's true to say that the uh, company uh, are well aware of some of the pressure points and uh, Willie Rennie is quite right to say this is a very encouraging, very positive statement and if he wants any uh, confirmation of that, he could, he could check it with the shop stewards and the employees. The First Minister met the employees across the, the site as well this afternoon and the relief and the positivity from them was, was palpable. Uh, I think in relation to the pressure points, obviously one is to make sure we have the bowl contract finished. That's crucially important so we can move on. And of course, two other immediate, if you want to call them pressure points, would be the two contracts which I've mentioned, uh, which obviously we're very keen to see uh, BIFAB uh, succeed with. Beyond that, of course, there'll be the uh, other opportunities which come up, perhaps not pressure points, but those three things I would imagine are really landmark um, uh, events for the company. First of all, making sure the bowl contract is completed that helps, of course, with the reputational building that they'll have to do in order to win these further contracts and also the winning of the two immediate um, contracts which are in front of them. Gillian Martin to be followed by Liz Smith. Gillian Martin. Thank you, President Officer. Picking up on what the Cabinet Secretary has said in his statement around oil and gas and also in uh, answer to Jenny Go Ruth, um, can he uh, explain, expand a little bit more on the opportunities that he's discussed with BIFAB about um, expanding into the oil and gas sector. I mean, obviously bringing the knowledge of the renewable sector into the oil and gas sector will only be a positive thing. And I can see opportunities around uh, learning from the oil and gas sector from the expertise in BIFAB as well as they expand into the, uh, renewables too. Can you give me um, a little bit more information on maybe what support they're going to get to access those markets? Cabinet Secretary. Hey. Can I thank Julie Martin for a question and say they'll get every support that it's possible for us to provide in addition to that support which of course we've already provided financial uh, and otherwise and Julie Martin makes a very good point about some of the opportunities here. DF Barnes would tell her if they met with her that they are very keen to see not just that they can serve some of the contracts which I mentioned but they want to export the expertise uh, that's been built up by BIFAB over a number of years. I said they have global ambitions and obviously uh, these things have to be worked through, the work has to be won but the potential is there. 
for this company to take BiPAP to a greater level even than previously it reached in terms of the renewables industry, but also in terms of oil and gas. Oil and gas is a very important sector in Canada as well as it is uh, here in Scotland. And of course, there's no harm at all. In fact, there's a great deal of benefit from a company with that background coming into the oil and gas supply chain. So there are major uh, opportunities here, and DF Barnes has been a consistent employer in the oil and gas fabrication and marine industries, as I said, for over 80 years. So as I say, this is a very positive investment, which will ensure that BIFAB can build uh, on its reputation in both of those sectors. Liz Smith, to be followed by Graham Day. Liz Smith. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary has quite rightly said that the uh, uh, enterprise and skills agencies are extremely important when it comes to the development of industrial strategy. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, will he also include universities and colleges in that strategy, given their increasing importance in innovation and the training of a dedicated, skilled and flexible workforce? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, our universities and colleges are fundamentally involved in the skills strategy that we've already produced. But in relation to this particular area, of course, we would want to see that expertise being deployed for that purposes. And it will be the responsibility of those agencies, uh, enterprise agencies and the skills agencies, to make sure that support is there. Obviously, if it's the case that it develops as we all want to see it develop and you have an increasing workforce, then the demand for those skills is going to be increasing over time. So it is important that we anticipate that and provide every support possible to facilitate it. Graham Day to be followed by Louis MacDonald. Uh, thank Dade. you. The Cabinet Secretary referred to the potential opportunities presented by FAB by consented offshore wind farm developments in the North Sea, including Inchcape off the coast of my constituency. But for these opportunities to be fully realised, such developments will require contract for difference, and most do not have that at present. Would he join me in encouraging the UK Government to now play their part in supporting Inchcape, other developments, and potentially by FAB by providing that contract for difference backing? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I would repeat that we are confident that BIFAP has a bright future and, of course, they are currently tendering for a number of contracts which will need to be secured under a competitive process. But it's not within the Scottish Government's gift to award contracts, but I am confident with the expert expertise of the workforce across the three yards and, of course, the knowledge, skill and track record which DF Barnes bring that it will ensure that any bid made by BIFAP in future uh, is competitive. In relation to the UK Government, I would say the group of MSPs that have been referred to and many others, including the government, have made representations to the UK government in this respect. It's in the UK government's industry uh, interests also to see a thriving industry here. And I would hope that we would continue to see the positive support uh, in terms of that and also being receptive to some of the requests which have been made uh, by MSPs and others, including the company trade unions, to make sure of the best possible situation for BIFAB going forward. Lewis MacDonald to be followed by Claire Adamson. Lewis Thank you very much. Jobs in the offshore energy sector matter in Fife and in Lewis and across <coughs> Scotland. The world's largest wind turbine, for example, is about to be decommissioned, uh, is about to be commissioned rather, in Aberdeen Bay. I wonder in relation to oil and gas, uh, whether the Cabinet Secretary expects DF Barnes to be uh, interested in fabrication or in decommissioning or in both. And can he tell us whether a minority shareholding will in any way involve government in decisions about where to bid for what across the energy sector. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, in relation to the first part of Louis McDonald's question, yes, it is the case. I think um, DF Barnes will want to look across a range of activities and take opportunities where they find them. And I've mentioned already that their background is in oil and gas and fabrication. And of course, they would be interested in decommissioning if it fits their skill set. So it's not for the government to put any limits um, or strictures on what um, DF Barnes uh, want to compete for. That's uh, obviously a decision for them. And the same thing would apply in relation to the government becoming uh, too involved as well. We are not the experts. We're not seeking to run this company. We don't realize that somebody in the private sector with the background that DF Barnes have are best placed to do that. It would be their decision to make. It doesn't mean to say the government's not going to be a, a, is, is going to be a disinterested party. Obviously, we're not, and we've shown that by what we've done up to this point. But it is the case that the company coming uh, to BIFAB, taking over BIFAB now, are best placed to take advantage of those opportunities. And Claire Adams. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As a member of the Scottish Steel's Task Force, whose work contributed to the successful um, purchase by Liberty Steel of Craigbridge and DL Mills, I know how effective the dedication of all involved, the collaboration of workforce unions, governments and community will have um, contributed to this successful uh, result today. Um, can I wish everyone well in that and also ask the Cabinet Secretary what investment the government is making now to ensure that our manufacturing in all the sectors mentioned this afternoon um, will have to ensure a viable and competitive future. 
Cabinet Secretary. Uh, we have developed and implemented a wide range of policies, as Claire Adamson knows, with our industrial and economic ambitions at their core. So that includes, of course, city deals, uh, enterprise and skills review phase two, the manufacturing action plan, the innovation can do plan. And in particular, I think we've recognised Scotland's strengths in manufacturing, not least with the examples that Claire Adamson has given. And that's why we've announced the location uh, and our partners in delivering the £65 million National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland in Renfrewshire. That's why the Strategic Board for Enterprise and Skills has been tasked with focusing our billions of pounds investment in key sectors and harnessing the knowledge of our universities and colleges. And that's why this government has shown the commitment to try and get to the position that we're now in today. This is a very good day for Fife and the Western Isles and a very good day for the employees of BIFAB. Thank you. And that concludes the Cabinet Secretary's statement. We turn now to decision time. And there's only one question to be put today. The question is that motion 11643 in the name of Graham Day on air quality in Scotland inquiry be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And that concludes decision time. We'll now move to members' business in the name of Lewis MacDonald on the 150th anniversary of Aberdeen Trades Union Council. We'll just take a few moments for members and the ministers to change seats.